on this episode of China Uncensored, Chinese New Year content! I can cut that camera. Welcome to China Uncensored. This is your traditional year-end dumpling, Chris Chappell. Hello, friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, my voice is a little hoarse. <laughs> but no, really, as of this week, there's going to be a little horse in all of us. <laughs> oh God, get it out! Oh, anyways, what I mean is, it's the Chinese New Year's. I'm sorry, did I say New Year's? I meant to say Spring Festival. New Year's is what they called it in the old, superstitious, feudalistic times in China, and currently everywhere else in Asia. But that was before China was liberated by the Communist Party. So now we have to call it the Spring Festival. And thank God for that. And by God, I mean a silly feudal superstition to control the masses. <laughs> Anyways, the Chinese have managed to use their advanced space technology to push the moon through another year worth of orbits. And now, they've gone and obliterated the year of the sweet, cuddly snake, and are imposing upon us the regime of a vicious new equine overlord. <laughs> Yes, it's the year of the horse. And like every year, the Chinese Communist Party is planning to celebrate in style with a big, quite tacky, hours-long performance of patriotic songs and dances. The practice of turning each new year into a heartwarming televised propaganda fest took its modern form in 1983, but the Communist Party had put on previous versions of the show since the mid-50s and had learned a lot from similar Soviet practices. Though it has to be said that Uncle Ivan put on some shows with a bit more je ne sais quoi. Что главное в туалете? If you didn't get that, you're not hip enough to be watching my show. Anywho, as with everything else done by the Chinese Communist Party, the New Year's event is a prime chance to get a glimpse of secretive political struggles and infighting. For instance, when current party chief Xi Jinping launched his anti-corruption drive last year, the Spring Festival Gala featured quote-unquote comedy skits mocking corrupt officials and voicing support for the new crackdown. It was <laughs> funny? No, wait, I mean scary, like always. This year, the organizers made waves by inviting a Chinese rock musician, Cui Jian, to the show. Cui is known as the father of Chinese rock. You could kind of say he's like the John Lennon of China. And one of his claims to fame is his support for the political protests of 1989. You know, the ones that ended in brutal suppression by the party. Somehow, he and the party ended up not seeing eye to eye on the content of his performance, and so he ended up dropping out. Who even invited him in the first place? Of course, there are loads of other examples, like how the power of certain party leaders is measured by how often their mistresses show up in the performances. In short, it may not be high on entertainment, but it's another evening of good old-fashioned morbid fascination for veteran China watchers. As for me, this time, I'd like to celebrate the New Year with my first ever China Uncensored Viewer Contest Gala Extravaganza Spectacular Event Thing! Just to send me your crude, horrific drawings of horsies. Uh, no, they don't have to be quite that good. Somehow that doesn't look quite right either. Ah, yeah, sure, whatever, something like that, or not. Anyway, send your drawings to me on the China Uncensored Facebook page, and I'll choose the best horse artwork, and in a future episode, announce the winner of the grand prize. Two fully paid round-trip tickets to the Jiaoyu Islands. Or are those the Senkaku Islands? Hopefully you'll find out soon after arriving. Better bring one of each just in case. So send in your entries and tell me how you're celebrating the Chinese New Year. As for me, I'll be sticking with the Russian version. Boy, those reds sure know how to party. Сократили в храме штаты, упразднили звонаря. Все равно мол, маловато прихожану алтаря. Ах, снег снежок, белая метелица. И вообще-то звонари сейчас уже не ценятся.